Good afternoon. Um, I'm excited to introduce you to Blink and the team that built it. Iris Chang, Dane Tonseth, and myself, Justin Isaf. Put simply, Blink allows a fully paralyzed individual to communicate using only the movement of their eyes. When we started this process, we really wanted to build something with the potential for meaningful social impact. And we picked Blink specifically as we learned about locked-in syndrome and Kitra and her story with her father, where they built deep, meaningful relationships, even though he was trapped inside his own body and could only move his eyes. Um, now, there are products out there that allow this, this kind of communication, but like the Megabee, they tend to be very manual or very expensive or both. So as we approached this problem as engineers, we identified two primary hurdles to get over. One, how do you remove the keyboard and mouse from a user experience and then reduce all communication into a single action, the blink? And then could we track that blink and other small eye and facial movements using just a laptop webcam and JavaScript? So we built a quick proof of concept, like Gabe said, um, and then when we proved that we could do this to ourselves, we doubled down, and I'm going to let Dane show you the result. Thank you, Justin. So here's Blink today. It is a fully functional web application that allows users to easily communicate um, using the dynamic keyboard and participate in real-time chat. To type, users Blink to select a row, and then Blink again to select a letter. In case of mistakes, our app is able to register the subtle differences between a single and double blink. Double blinks act as our app's undo function. To increase the accessibility of our application, we decided to implement autocomplete as well as next word prediction. We couldn't find an appropriate library for this, so we developed our own and packaged it as a node module that is now available on NPM. We accomplished all of this by using a JavaScript facial recognition library called CLM Tracker. CLM Tracker provides us with the various X and Y coordinates around the eye. In turn, we use this data to determine the area of the exposed eyeball. One of the problems we encountered was the subtle differences in between users' blinks. As you can see, our blink profiles are fairly different. To account for these differences, we created an automatic calibration algorithm that dynamically sets the user's I0 as well as blink zero. We use this similar calibration method for our grid interface, which Iris will tell you about more. Thanks, Dane. So as an extra feature, we implemented a second keyboard with a grid layout so that every letter is selectable with just one glance and a blink. This keyboard uses pupil tracking to calculate where on the screen a user is looking. While this was challenging, our bigger challenge was actually integration into our own architecture, which brings me to our re-architecture. So when we started out, we knew that every page needed to check tracking positions from the webcam, iterate through selectable links, and respond when a blink was detected. Our initial architecture was heavily reliant on information being transferred and modified between several different modules. This made it difficult for us to add new functionality or to even update existing ones. So we took a step back, and we realized that our application is fundamentally driven by two key events, blinks and automatic UI steps. So here's our new architecture. In this system, a single timer emits both blink and iteration events, while the rest of our app simply listens for those events and responds with state-specific actions. By refactoring to use event emitters, we were able to reduce over 1,700 lines of code from these factories to just 400 resulting in a far more performant and extendable app. Again, I'm Iris, this is Dane, and this is Justin, and you can visit us at doubleblink.org. Thank you.